Hello and welcome back for video three of the special training series on how to build a customized grappling system. Glad to have you back. First off, I wanna thank everyone for all the love I've been getting, whether it's messages, comments, shares, I appreciate all of it. Uh, it has been awesome so far, but we're not done yet. Um, at this point, we've come a long way. We've talked about action reaction result of analyzing your jujitsu. We discussed a storyline strategy and how to add flow to our system. We then use a position audit strategy to grow our system. And we've gone over a bunch of different examples of graphing techniques and how you might fit them into an actual system. In case you're just jumping into the series now, as you can tell, um, we've gone through a lot of videos one and two. And I really do recommend going back and watching them first so you have some context about what we're gonna be talking about in this video. It builds upon the work we've done in the first two videos and I don't want you to miss out on everything. If, however, you're up to speed and ready to go, then we've got a big question we need to answer. It's one of the biggest questions that comes up time and time again in jiu-jitsu when training at the academy. And the question is, but what if they do this? To better explain what I mean, uh, let me give you an example that might sound familiar. Class starts and you warm up and your instructor teaches an escape. You drill with your partner again and again and it starts coming together. You're escaping no problem. So you finish drilling and it's time to roll. And you slap, you dab, you start rolling, you think, I'm gonna use that escape if I need it. It's gonna be awesome. But when the time comes, something goes wrong. Your opponent easily counters your escape. How can this happen? Just five minutes ago, you were drilling the escape with no problem and it works just fine. So at the end of class, you go up to your instructor and say, I tried the escape I learned in class today and it didn't work. I did everything you showed me, but, but what if they do this? So here's the deal. Even though you may have a game plan, chances are your opponent has other things in mind and will take the steps to prevent your system from working. For every technique that you try, your opponent might attempt to counter your action, leaving you frustrated and back at square one. So the trick is to pay attention to and identify those counters so you can anticipate where your opponent's reactions will be. Bottom line is you're never gonna get your black belt if you don't have a process for identifying and dealing with the what if situations. But fortunately for the rest of this video, I'm gonna teach you how to keep track of and manage all of these what if situations and how to build them into your system so there are no surprises. This is the, where the real mind reading trick begins. It's like this, if you have someone in your system, then you know what their responses are gonna be ahead of time. And if you know how to counter those responses, then you're always gonna be a step ahead of your opponent. It's almost unfair because you start each role knowing exactly what your game plan is and how to deal with any of the counters your opponent's gonna throw at you. If you watch video one in this training series, you're gonna be familiar with the action reaction result method. We're gonna use that again here. In review, let's analyze a simple scenario. Uh, you perform an action like a triangle choke. The successful result of that action is a submission. But what if your opponent postures up as soon as you attack with your legs? This alleviates the pressure of the choke and takes them out of immediate danger. This is a potential reaction that your opponent might use to try and stop your action. And these are the types of riddles you need to identify and solve. The reason that we're identifying the most common reactions to your movements is so we're a step ahead of our opponent, like reading their mind. You set the trap before you even step on the mat. As usual, I have a PDF worksheet for you to download at bjjsystembuilder.com bonus that you can use to complete our next exercise. And the exercise is called the reaction audit. Since we already talked about the triangle choke a bit, let's stick with that technique. We know that our action is a triangle choke and we know that our successful result is a submission. The first step of this exercise is to create a list of your opponent's potential reactions to your triangle choke. One of the easiest way to figure this out is to simply try the triangle choke when you're rolling and see how your opponent reacts. But for the sake of this example, let's say you've already paid attention and know how someone might counter your triangle choke. Remember the one we looked at earlier? Your opponent might try and posture up as soon as you attack with your legs. What are some other potential reactions? He might tuck his arm back to relieve some of the choke's pressure. He might try and shuck you by and pass your guard. And he might try and step over your body to relieve pressure. This is a pretty good list to start with. So on to step two. Let's identify your next actions to respond to your opponent's potential reactions. Back to our example. If you attack with your triangle choke and your opponent reacts by posturing up as soon as you attack with your legs, then your next action could be to control their head. This doesn't even give them a chance to counter your choke. Instead, if he tucks his arm back to avoid the choke, then your next action could be the omoplata. If he tried to shuck you by and pass your guard, then you can redirect his energy, adjust, and attack with the armbar. If he tries to step over your body and escape the choke, you can redirect his leg and take the back. 
or if you prefer, you can go to the mount position. You get the idea by now. The goal is to solve the what if they do this problem for the techniques that you've added to your system. This is a process, and that's something you can do just in one sitting. It takes some time. And at first, you might not know how to deal with the reaction. In this case, it's called a hole in your game, and it's completely normal. Identifying holes is a huge part of creating and learning a system. The reason for identifying where you get stuck is so you can focus your time, training, and energy on fixing those areas instead of leaving yourself vulnerable every time you step on the mat. You see, when you know what your holes are, you know exactly what to train when you're at the academy. And you know exactly what questions to ask your instructor. Now see, there's a big difference between saying, I can't escape the mount position, and saying, I can't get my left leg out of my opponent's grapevine when I'm mounted. The second question is much more specific and likely to find you a solution. As they say, asking the right question is halfway to finding the answer. You know exactly what you have to do to improve your game, and you have the structure and the focus that most grapplers never possess. Even when you get tapped, you can't lose, meaning when your opponent kicks your butt, thank them. They just gave you some more information that you can use to build and improve your system. I mean, we're in a really lucky era of jujitsu right now because knowledge is everywhere. We have so many resources to fix the holes in your game. I mean, of course, your first step is to ask your instructor how to fix your problem or solve it, but you also have access to all the different instructionals and training websites out there. And despite what some folks might say, there's some really interesting things on YouTube that might give you some great ideas on what to experiment with experiment with on the map. But the key to solving the what if, what if question is to use a reaction audit and to systematically crush every roadblock to improving your grappling game. Okay, let's rewind. We started with the system builder training course. I promise to teach you to be a step ahead of your opponent when you're rolling. I promise to teach you a process for analyzing your jiu-jitsu, building a personalized grappling system, and identifying holes in your game so you have a structure you need to accelerate your learning and performance on the map. And in the past three videos, we broke down exactly how to achieve these goals with a specific step-by-step -step process. Now, here's the deal. Remember our motto, no one has ever gotten good at jiu-jitsu by mistake. It takes hard work, dedication, and passion. Since you're watching this video, I'm thinking you already have the passion part. I mean, there's no real other reason uh, to watch these training unless you love grappling or looking to improve your game. So it comes down to hard work and dedication. Will you get the ball rolling and at least start building your system and take your game to the next level? If you did the work and built your system during the video training course, then you're gonna wanna see how to actually use and manage your system off the mat so you can grow it, maintain it, and perfect it. Building the initial system is only the first step to becoming that black belt ninja you've always wanted to be. On the other hand, if you watch the videos first before starting your system, that's actually really normal, and have a way for you to make it even easier to get all the work done uh, that we learned in this video series. So if you just built your system or you're ready to go, I've created some advanced training software designed specifically for people who've watched this video training series. Uh, think of it as having access to your own superpower BJJ brand who is programmed to help you build your grappling system. Available 24-7 and designed to walk you through the whole process, whether you're uh, brand new or whether you've been grappling for years. So it's really important that you watch out for the next video because you're going to get a chance to leverage what you learned in this whole video series with the unfair advantage of the advanced BJJ Brain technology. If you thought that anything in this video training has been interesting and helpful and informative in any way, then you're definitely going to want to hear about this. We're talking about a way to make growing and managing your system uh, even easier and more effective. Lastly, if you dig what we talked about in this video and think it could help one of your training partners or your other friends, can you do me a solid and share it wherever you share your goodies? That would be awesome. But in the meantime, post a comment and let me know what your reason is for training jiu-jitsu. Uh, do you want to win a world championship, fight MMA, uh, self-defense, or maybe you just love it because it's in your DNA? Go ahead and scroll down below this page and let me know why you train in grappling. And don't forget, you can get all three of the earlier training videos along with the worksheets for the exercise in this video by going to bjjsystembuilder.com slash bonus. In the meantime, live life, have fun, and train jujitsu. See you in the next video.